Greetings viewers and welcome to today's info sharing session. We'll be discussing how to process a job card within Sage Trend Evolution. Now job cards can be used for different activities such as repair, maintenance or servicing tasks and we'll be processing a job card under those circumstances during today's presentation. Now I'm going to go firstly through to job costing transactions select new job and the job card process really consists of three statuses job card quote an active job card and a completed job card so we're starting off with a job card quote and I'm now going to specify the customer for who the job card is going to be processed and we have a couple of tabs in the job card header. These include job details, where I can then go link the job card to a certain project. And I can also specify a start date, delivery date, and a projected completion date for the specific job. On the invoicing details tab, I can specify an order number, an external order, as well as specify a representative for this particular job card. On the incident history tab, I can link the job card to an incident if I'm making use of the resolve module within Sage Trend Evolution. Now, transaction lines can be added onto job card from four different sources. These include stock, general ledger, payroll, and accounts payable. Firstly, I'm going to add a new line, which is going to be a stock line, and I'm going to use a stock transaction code, and now it's really a case of specifying the item, or items that are going to be used on this particular job card. The quantity in the warehouse. And we'll just add some additional stock lines onto the job card. Right, so I've got my stock items to be used on this particular task or activity. I'm then going to use the general ledger source code. So it's very possible that you may need to allocate some form of a sundry expense on the job card via a dual account. And to do that, you would use the general ledger source and the financial lines transaction code. And now I'm just going to go specify a general ledger account for my GL chart of accounts and for example it may be equipment rental and I've got the details there the cost right so that's the, my general ledger source code I can also make use of payrolls so it may be that you'd want to allocate some form of labor charge on the job card and then I can then make use of the payroll source code, the payroll transaction code, and then we could set up certain labor rates, and I can then go specify that information on the job card as labor, and also the number of hours that are going to be used to carry out this particular task. We also have the ability to make use of accounts payable, and that transaction code is called subcontractors. So very often it may be that you require a third party process to complete a specific job card or activity. You can then use the accounts payable subcontractor transaction code and specify a supplier who will then be undertaking this particular process, task, and details of what their charges would be 
in order to undertake this activity. Right, so I've now got my job card in a quotation form and I'm now going to say save process. We've then got our job card quotation with all the details there and listing the information being the stock items, the labor charge as well as any sort of subcontracting where they need to be done in order to complete this task. We've got our job card number and our job card quotation number as references. Right, so this quote will then be sent to the customer for review and what you'll notice is that we've got our job card together with the status being the quotation. So the customer will then, for example, accept the quotation and we could now convert this quotation into an active job card. So I'm going to edit the job card and we're going to change the status from quote to active and I'm then going to make the line the job card active. Right, so I've made the job card active and we've now beginning the actual physical work to complete this task. And what has happened now is that we have transactions being moved into a state of work in progress. So, I'm just going to say save process and close. And we now can print the picking slip for the items that are going to be used in this activity. Got our details there, the number of units. We've got our picking slip together with our job card number. And let's just go look at the work in progress scenario. So under our job costing, I've got a reports option. And there I can go look at work in progress. And we can obviously go look at work in progress activities from a specific job card. So I'm going to go to the job card we're currently working with. And we've got our details there. And if I preview, we have our job card information. So our job card number, details of the customer, um, and also all the line items that have been allocated onto that job card. And notice is that they're currently in work in progress and I've got my units there and we currently have the work in progress on this job card displaying with all the relevant information. So the job card is now active, it's in work in progress and if we then just go for example Back to our stock items, we can go view the work in progress per individual stock item. So if I, for example, just go to my inquiries under inventory, transaction history, and take, for example, one of the items, and I'm just going to view details. You see that we've got a lot of transaction line, details of our job number, which is now allocated to the job card. And if I go to my item information, you'll see that we also have a quantity in work in progress for job cards listed per individual item. So we currently have 42 available, how a big important 42 on hand, 41 available, and the one unit is a work in progress unit. And so you can obviously view the work in progress quantities per individual items. Right, if we then go through to our suppliers, we can then go to inquiries under suppliers and we can then go and find the supplier linked to our job card. And if I say view there, we've got details about the job card, the reference information and the subcontracting work that the supplier is going to be carrying out on the job card, which is allocated to the supplier's account. Right, so 
In the meantime, the process, the physical activity of completing the service or repair job is taking place. And if we then revert back to our job cards, once the physical activity has been completed, I'm going to go back into my job card. And we've got our details there. I'm now going to change status to a completed job. So I'm going to say complete. And I'm going to process a final invoice to complete the job code. So I'm going to say yes for the final invoice. Invoice all the line items and save process. look at the job card invoice in this instance and there we have it there's our job card invoice we then got details about the job card number our invoice information delivery note etc and all the components that we use in the job card these include the stock items the labor charge as well as any sort of subcontracting or third party work which was done on that particular job card and that process has now been completed. You notice is that our job has now got a complete status. And if I go to my reports and view the work in progress report for that job number, you notice that we've got our details there. We have now a complete status and we have a zero work in progress balance as the work in progress has now been cleared as a job has been completed. We can then also revert back to our inventory inquiries and the transaction history and if I now view the information there you'll see that the quantity and work in progress for the job card has been cleared as the job has been completed and we now have the same quantity on hand and the quantity available. The work in progress for the job card has now been cleared. So if you just go back to our job cards, really it's a case of when opening up a new job card, we've got those three statuses being the job card quote, active job card and completed job card and then just the ability to go and allocate transactions onto a job card from four different sources, this being stock, general ledger, accounts payable and payroll. And once a quote has been accepted, the job card then becomes active. The work in progress element comes into play as stock items and components allocated to a job card. And upon completion of the physical work, the job card is then set to complete and the customer is then invoiced. I do hope you've enjoyed the presentation today on job costing. Thank you very much for tuning in. It's over and out for me and goodbye.